So Griffith uh, spent some time last year rethinking its place towards 2020 and, and the Vice Chancellor issued the Griffith 2020 statement and it, it, it aims to position Griffith as a university of influence, developing graduates that have a positive influence within their communities and can make a positive difference and undertaking research that adds value and, and addresses some of the global challenges that all countries are facing. Griffith's been, uh, was one of the founding members of Open Universities Australia, so it's had a long commitment to making study open and attracting new people into study. In fact, we're the largest provider to OUA, and most recently we were involved in setting up their, some of their open to study uh, modules, which are mini MOOCs essentially. Um, so partnerships really important in that space, in the online space, and having key partners that you can work with to get to the students you wish to get to. But more importantly, from a Griffith perspective and our own students, it's very much about flexibility. It's about giving students choice about how they study, when they study, giving them the tools and technologies that allow them to fit their learning styles to the way in which they consume content. So we're going through and, and revamping a large number of our programs to offer that level of flexibility so that students can choose to do either a course fully online or a whole program online or dip in and out of online and on-campus study. Universities have always been in the data space because of their research and, and so much of that's about collaboration and partnering. So there's a lot happening in the big data area that, that means that we have to have really strong partnerships and collaborations with state and federal based agencies so that we can ship data around so through services like our net services but also store it, manage and manipulate it to support our researchers effectively. So that's, that's a big piece of the big data puzzle for us and that will only grow um, as more and more instruments collect more and more data that's of value to our researchers. But in the teaching space, that's where we're seeing the most activity, certainly here. We're trying to mine the data we have about our students, not just the more formal, traditional, collected data about our students, but some of the informal data that we can glean through social networks and, and surveys, and, and map, mine and manipulate that to have a look at what the predictors are of student success and better understand their behaviours and the way in which they learn, and use that to improve what we do. Probably the one that, um, I find most interesting at the moment is how you rethink IT strategy and IT decision making in a world where it's so much about partnerships and engagement. So it's not, let's decide we need an X and go out to market and buy one and implement it. It's much more about well, what's the business problem we have, who might we partner with to deliver an IT solution that's going to support that and it may or may not involve us purchasing technology. Um, so how do we rethink the traditional models of decision making and planning? And that partnering differently with the business as well, because all too often they come and say, I need a system you know, to build widgets. And in fact, what you have to do is unpack that conversation and go back and say, well, what's the business outcome you want? Let's work out the best way to get there. Is it partnering with someone? Is it looking for an open source solution? Um, so let's, you know, how do we unpack kind of traditional models of thinking about planning and decision making and partner with our key stakeholders and with external agencies to deliver the best possible outcome. So I think that's kind of, it, it's exciting but also quite challenging. Um, the other is uh, what Brad Wheeler, who's the CIO at Indiana University, calls um, frictionless innovation. How do we build our systems and solutions so that our scholars can innovate? So we want them to be able to bring in any device, tool, application, whatever works for them in order to undertake their research or their teaching or their, their learning. Um, but 
do that in an environment that keeps everything robust, scalable, um, secure when it's required to be secure. So how do we make that work, give them that, that ability to innovate but without any friction? You know, they can plug into the data they need, they can plug into the tools they need in a seamless way. So I think, again, that's challenging some of the thinking. It's not, we can no longer control the choices they're making, but how do we make sure that those choices are supported in an appropriate way? And the last, I think, which relates to that, is this balancing the need to be agile and innovative um, with managing the risks associated with that. So this, we're, we're frequently now having conversations about how to mitigate risk, not remove it. We, we talk in our IT 2020 strategy about being a connected, agile and sustainable university. Um, we can't predict what the technology will be like in 2020, but if we can embed those characteristics in the way in which we work, we think we'll be in good shape. So the connected is really important and this whole internet of everything just opens up so many opportunities for thinking differently about the business of research, the business of teaching and the way in which we actually operate.